We got to the top of Mount Fuji just before sunrise. My girlfriend and I had hiked for five hours the day before, stopping at a hut about two-thirds of the way up the mountain, and then woke up at 2.30 so we could make it to the top to have the true land of the rising sun experience. Except we couldn't see the sun that day because it was cloudy and misty. We sang our last round of our motivational hiking song, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> Bought some hot chocolate and stood under an overhang waiting for the clouds to part. A few minutes later, she turned to me and said, it's too bad that we couldn't see the sunrise, but I still think it was a pretty good adventure. I said, yeah, it was. As she pulled a ring out of her pocket and asked, will you have more adventures with me? Will you marry me? Just then, I reached down into my backpack and pulled out an envelope. As she asked what I was doing, I pulled out the ring I had brought up the mountain for her <laughs> and said, I like to be prepared. Later, one of our married friends joked that Fuji was the perfect metaphor for the years ahead. You got engaged at the top of a mountain. Planning a wedding is like climbing the mountain all over again. And then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> we had no idea how right he would turn out to be. About the wedding, that is. When I first met Caitlin two and a half years earlier, the truth is that I was totally unprepared to fall in love with someone like her. I say that I knew that this was something serious the day that she took leave from the Navy to fly across the country and surprise me for my birthday with a homemade strawberry rhubarb pie. In high school, my best friend planned a surprise party for me two months after my actual birthday because I'm a super sleuth and impossible to surprise. I had proudly told Caitlin that story, so when I opened the door and saw her standing there, I burst out crying. From that moment, I knew that I would follow her anywhere. She claims that she won me over with her dance moves, which are awesome. <laughs> A year after we met, she got orders to go to Japan. The day she found out and called to tell me, all she said when I picked up the phone was, hi, do you want to have an adventure with me? I quit my job as a lawyer, sold all of my stuff, and followed her across the Pacific Ocean. During our two years in Japan, we had countless kitchen dance parties, supported each other, and argued, and made up, and ate lots of sushi. <laughs> Along the way, we visited South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Bali, and Mount Fuji. We knew that it would be a long time before we could have a big wedding. She's still deployed even now, but we decided that we would get legally married at City Hall during a trip back to San Diego that winter. And then, six weeks later, we got an email from her mom. Just want to let you know, as of the most recent ruling, you two can now get married in the Commonwealth of Virginia. She was right. The Supreme Court had denied Virginia's appeal, and now we could get married in Caitlin's home state. I mean, what better place to tie the knot than a state that just went all the way to the highest court of the land to try and stop us? <laughs> we decided to exercise our newfound constitutional right to get married in Virginia on the Friday before Martin Luther King Day. Considering the circumstances, I knew I had to choose our officiant carefully. So I looked at the list of commissioners on the court's website and used my super sleuth skills to avoid any surprise bigotry. I found the perfect man for the job, Hugo A. Owens Jr. His father had fought to integrate the city parks, libraries, and hospital, and was one of the first two black men on the city council. The junior Hugo Owens had to be down with marriage equality, right? So I called Hugo up and asked if he was free to do the ceremony on our chosen day. I had already checked to make sure that Martin Luther King Day was celebrated on Monday, not Friday. We made plans for Hugo to come to Caitlin's dad's house to do the ceremony, and I tried to make sure that Hugo understood the deal. My fiance, she 
grew up here, and so we wanted to do it at her father's house. Her parents want to be there. Hugo seemed unaffected by my gender pronouns and reminded me to get the marriage license in the morning before the ceremony. A few minutes later, Hugo called back. Oh no, I thought. It just clicked with him there were two ladies and now he doesn't want to do it. Instead, he asked, by the way, I know this is a civil ceremony, but would you mind if I read a short passage from the New Testament? Uh, sure, that would be fine, I guess. Just something from Corinthians. As I hung up and typed Corinthians into Google, I thought to myself, <laughs> please let this be the love is patient, love is kind passage. Because it turns out there is another passage with the title Concerning Married Life, which says the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. It seemed a little graphic. So I kept my fingers crossed that Hugo had made the conventional choice. When the morning of the wedding finally came, I nervously watched the clock as we each did our hair and makeup for the home ceremony, packed up our wedding dresses, and headed to the courthouse to pick up the marriage license. We were running late, but as long as the courthouse wasn't too busy, it would be fine. I don't think it takes that long, I said in the car, mostly to reassure myself. I was excited when we got to the courthouse and saw that the parking lot was almost empty. We all walked up to the sliding glass door of the courthouse. It didn't open. I pressed my face against the glass, confused. I had checked the courthouse website at least 10 times. Martin Luther King Day was Monday. I pointed at the sign on the door. MLK Day is Monday. Why isn't it open? We looked inside and saw a group of police officers doing some kind of training. Would they close the courthouse to the public for that, I thought? And then I saw it. To the left of the MLK Day sign was another eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with the words, courthouse closed on January 16th in observance of Lee Jackson Day. Oh, Lee Jackson Day, Caitlin said. I thought they got rid of that. I had no idea what the fuck Lee Jackson Day was. But I took a guess. Like, Robert E. Lee? Yep. And Stonewall Jackson. I couldn't believe it. The reason we couldn't get our gay marriage license was a man named Stonewall. <laughs> As further proof that the universe has a nasty sense of humor, it turns out that Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and Martin Luther King's birthdays are all in the same week. Lee and Jackson days became holidays during the early days of Jim Crow. When MLK Day became a holiday, rather than stop celebrating the Confederate heroes, Virginia celebrated all three birthdays on the same holiday. <laughs> That's this year. They've split them back into two days since then, and schools are only closed on MLK Day, hence the confusion. We went back to the car and frantically called other nearby courthouses, searching for one that might be open. Norfolk, no answer. Virginia Beach, no answer. Just then, the phone rang. It was Hugo A. Owens Jr. calling to confirm our appointment for the ceremony. Trying to hold back tears, I told him that the courthouse was closed because of Lee Jackson Day. Oh, I didn't know it was still a holiday. <laughs> My children are at school today. I guess it's a state government holiday? We didn't know either. He offered to do the ceremony another day, but we explained that we had to leave. And then 
Hugo, who wasn't allowed to borrow books from the all-white library as a child, apologized to me about Robert E. Lee Day. I was guilty forever doubting him and sad that he wouldn't be a part of the ceremony and frustrated that the only thing I had to worry about was something I had never seen coming. But I wasn't going to let Southern racism stop these two white girls from getting married. <laughs> we sat in the empty parking lot. Caitlin was doing everything she could to make it better, shouting out the name of other nearby counties and holding my hand while I called each courthouse. She said, I guess they're all closed since it's a state holiday. Wait, it's a state holiday. I didn't get it. We could go to North Carolina. After checking to make sure we could legally get married there, we sprung into action. The closest courthouse was in Currituck County, about half an hour away. Of course, Hugo A. Owens couldn't marry us there. The power that was vested in him was vested by the state of Virginia. Who was going to marry us now? We looked up the rules about who can perform wedding ceremonies in North Carolina, and much to my surprise, the authority of the Universal Life Church is respected there. <laughs> From the road, we sent a text message to Caitlin's brother. Can you get ordained and write a wedding ceremony in the next hour? We made it to the government building in Currituck. There were cars in the parking lot, a good sign. When we walked into the office to apply for a marriage license, there were three women working. When we told them why we were there, all three heads popped up. Not only was this the only government business that seemed to be going on that day, I had a real suspicion that this was the first time two ladies had tried to get married in Currituck County. After we filled out the license application, the clerk came out. She pulled out a worn-looking Bible, and I prepared to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Instead, she just said, put your hands on the Bible. Is everything in this application correct? <laughs> we said yes, and she handed us the license. Our bad luck had turned around, and it kept getting better. Caitlin's brother sent us his internet ordination certificate, and her dad told us he had keys to her grandmother's house since we needed some location in the state of North Carolina to actually do the ceremony. And on a beautiful day on a backyard pier on the Curry Tuck Sound with our parents around us, we got married. It was a short ceremony. Caitlin's brother talked about our relationship read a Pablo Neruda poem, and then said, you guys are married. <laughs> After the wedding, we went back to Caitlin's dad's house for a celebration lunch catered by, I am not making this up, Chick-fil-A. As we left Virginia on Martin Luther King Day, which fell on Robert E. Lee's actual birthday this year, <laughs> we saw a giant Confederate flag waving on the side of the highway. I looked at the woman who was now my wife in North Carolina and Virginia and at home in California and thought, started from the bottom, now we're here. That was Lauren 